Okay, it looks like we've got a caller. I'm hoping that's Becky, but we'll find out here in a second. Uh, good afternoon. What's your name? You're going to be sadly disappointed. You're not Becky. No, I'm not Becky. That's a big, big drop off from what you were expecting to. <laughs> no, it's not. I, none, I nonetheless, I, I did want, I was trying to get Becky Gerritsen on, but it looks like she has forgotten about us or something. So yeah, go ahead. What, what's on your mind? Yeah, I just had a question about something. One of your coworkers this morning was talking about uh, that someone made an idiot out of themselves yesterday in Alabama with regard to abortion, and I didn't know which side it was, who it was, or anything. But it seems to be making the circuit with regard to the news around the country. So do you know what he's talking about? You're talking about Alabama State Representative John Rogers? Uh, maybe. I don't know. See, I... They, I just caught the very tail end of it, and I know that's kind of vague. Well, I tell you what, since you brought it up and that was going to be my next point anyway, if you'll just hang on for a second, let me go ahead and play the clip that they're talking about that made the rounds in the national news, because I actually have it pulled up here. Okay. All right, here it goes. This is Alabama State Representative John Rogers of Birmingham. All I'm saying to you, it ought to be a woman's choice. I'm not about to be as a male tell a woman what to do with her body. She has a right to make that decision herself. To rape the incest. Some kids are unwanted. So you kill them now, you kill them later. You, you bring them in the world unwanted, unloved. Then you send them to the electric chair. So you kill them now, you kill them later. But the bottom line is this is that I think we should be making this decision. All right, so... All right, so there you have it. Representative John Rogers of Birmingham. Some kids are just unwanted, so you either kill them now or kill them later. You either kill them in the womb or you kill them in the electric chair. That's his stance. So was that, was that the clip that you were thinking about? I, it had to be, because if you say anything that ridiculous, maybe um, is it possible to impeach somebody for being stupid? No, there would be an awful lot of people impeached if we made that a rule. That's uh, that's pretty high level of stupid right there, though. Oh, as I said at the beginning of the show, the stupid has been raining down as a flood from heaven this the, the past two days. There has been so much stupid in the news. But yeah, there there's several reasons why this is an incredibly idiotic argument. First of all, he's essentially making the case that we kill criminals before they commit crimes. Let's just assume that he were right and all the children that are aborted would commit some kind of heinous crime that would land them in the electric chair, which is absurd on a number of levels, and we'll get to that in a second. But even if that were the case, he's saying that we should go ahead and kill them before they commit crimes. Now, I don't feel comfortable with the idea of trying to figure out which people are likely to commit crimes and which ones are not likely and going ahead and destroying them before they have the opportunity to commit the crime. That's literally the plot of Captain America Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just horrendous what he's suggesting there. I'd hate to know what his ideas about our youth is. You know, if he has that kind of an attitude about it, I, that, uh, that's over the top, and, and that's embarrassing. Well, and that's another thing, too. You can never make the value of a person's life dependent on, upon whether they're, quote, wanted or unwanted, as he's suggesting. Because if that were the case, there's a lot of people that would be executed. Heck, there's a lot of people that don't want me. That, that would, I mean, because, you know, they disagree with me politically, that would not want me. And so are, are we really going to bring up this new standard that anybody that is, quote, unwanted or unloved should just go ahead and be executed? That's absolutely yeah, well, insane. Uh, obviously, I've known a lot of young people that, that had children that were surprises and they Went ahead sure. and had them, and some of them had a lot of strikes against them right off the bat, and sometimes they turned out far better than their parents ever thought about being. You don't know how a kid's going to turn out. No. And that can be negative, but in, in many instances, though, it is positive. And that, this idea of thinking you can put a value on life, uh, that child coming may, may have far more value than the the politician does. <laughs> I 
I don't right. disagree. And, and here's another thing that we really need to consider, and I want to kind of get your reaction to this as well. If we are supposed to just kill anybody that is at a high probability of committing crimes, if, if that's really what our new standard is going to be, then that means we need to kill every child that only has one parent whether uh -huh. it's an accident or divorce or whatever, if there's only one parent, we need to go ahead and kill all those children because they are at a far higher probability of committing crimes. We need to kill every child whose parent makes below about twenty or $30,000 a year because they're at a very high risk for committing crimes. We need to kill every child that is currently receiving welfare or some kind of government assistance because those childs are at a dis disproportionately high rate of committing crimes and, and I know this is going to be wildly offensive, that's the point, we need to kill all minority children because well, they are at a higher rate of committing crimes. Now, if I you find that, that horribly racist and offensive, that's because it is. I'm, I'm thinking of a person that fits a lot of that, mm -hmm. and that's our Surgeon General. Uh, are you talking about Ben Carson? Yes. He, he's actually over the HUD department. Oh, yeah. I thought he was, that's right. Yeah, he's not surgeon. General. A lot of people suggested he should be the surgeon general, yeah, and that he would have been good I'm at that. But he's that. yeah, he's but in you, in the Department you know of Housing Dr. and Urban Carson Development. Is, of course. Do what and, now? And he's in the he. I say, of course, you know who Doctor Carson is. He's sure, an incredible representative of what's all good and right about America. Well, and that's the I mean, thing. This is a guy who was raised by a single mother. He was in deep poverty with lots of brothers and sisters. And he, I mean, he was, of course, a minority person as well. He's a black guy. So he had statistically everything working against him. Well, but this a is a man who has school. saved the lives of hundreds of children. Yeah, he has a track record at school, too, because he got in all kinds of trouble, got in fights and stayed in, in uh, trouble with the office a lot, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I think his contributions to the world have been incredible. Absolutely. And that's really that that's really the bottom line here is that you don't know and you can't just decide ahead of time what a person's life is going to be and because you think that their chances are dismal that you go ahead and kill them that's something that tyrants and uh, uh the worst dictators in human history have done that's yeah, not that's something Hitler that Americans do Isn't it a little bit Hitlerish it, It's very Hitlerish that was Hitler's plan he said that Jews were leeches off of society and and also included religious people and gay people and communists and because of that he had them transported to death camps to have them executed yeah. that was his whole argument i know and uh well i, I was just i hadn't heard the clip and uh you know i just wanted to know what was going on because when we hear uh something like that I, and, and anything of something comes up about abortion that my ears perk up anyway, and I sure. hope that I can't hear it. And hopefully, uh, well, we've already passed the ban, right? Uh, the House has. It goes to the, the Senate has. now. Yes. Well, I do like our percentage. Yeah, it's got a very good chance of passing. And like I said, I can't see Governor Ivy vetoing it, so it has no. a pretty clear shot to to wind up passing. Yeah. Well, thank you. Enjoy the show. Yeah. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. But. There's so many reasons why that's absurd and ridiculous. The idea that we ought to just be killing people before they even commit the crime is a thoroughly un-American and thoroughly anti-human idea. Like I said, that, that's the whole plot of Captain America Winter Soldier is that they put the uh, – you'll remember S.H.I.E.L.D. was co-opted by HYDRA and they're the bad guys in the movie. And they created an algorithm that predicts when a person is going to commit a crime and it just – circles the entire earth and kills anybody that's about to commit a crime and they're trying to create a perfect society. That's right out of, uh, it's literally right out of science fiction, the idea that you start killing people before they commit crimes. It's like, uh, oh, what's that show, Minority Report, I think, where they they basically figure out how to predict when people are going to commit crimes and then they kill them before that happens. I'm probably butchering that synopsis. I've not actually seen a full episode of of one of them, so take that with a grain of salt. But my point is this is something that's a, a super villain out of science fiction does not something, somebody that should be holding office in the state of Alabama's house of representatives. And th this is, this really brings me to a very simple way to break essentially any abortion argument. 
anytime somebody tries to apply a standard to people in the womb, all you have to do is say, what if it were a five-year-old? And not every argument, but nine times out of ten, it pretty much washes away any chances of that argument surviving. Because if you were saying the same thing about children that were already born in the analogy that I just used and explained, then you understand very quickly why that wouldn't fly. If, like I said, if it were just somebody that had the odds stacked against them and they were somebody that was a minority and impoverished and only had one parent and all these things and you just decided, well, they've got very little chance of being a productive member of society, so let's just go ahead and kill them now. I mean, any person would look at that and say, that's incredibly evil. But why don't we apply the same logic to the person growing in the womb? Why is that any different? And another thing that you also are completely ignoring here is that you're assuming that adoption is not an option as well. There are some children that when a woman is impregnated, she doesn't want to take care of that child. That happens. But adoption is also an option. They also have the ability to give their child up to a couple that does want it. And this idea that that's not a viable thing or there are too many children that are aborted to uh, – there would be so many of them it would fill up our orphanages, that's not true either. Which even if that were the case, growing up in an orphanage is still better than dying. But even if that weren't the case, there are people that wait in line on the waiting list for years to be able to adopt a baby. And – I have known several couples that went through this. People in my own family have gone through this. There's a couple at my congregation right now that has been on the waiting list for a baby for, I think, about a year and a half now. And I mean, great couple, make good money, have a great home, good Christian morals and values, very faithful to one another. Even still, still have a hard time being able to find a baby to adopt. And so this idea that because they're unwanted, they shouldn't be given a chance. Like I said, even if they did wind up in an orphanage, that's still better than being executed. But the odds of that happening are pretty slim. It's harder to get some older kids adopted. But as far as babies, there is no shortage of couples that want to go and adopt babies. That's just simply not true. And so this argument completely ignores even considering that as a possible option. And even if his logic here weren't garbage, as we've just pointed out, his facts are still completely wrong. So in the past decade, the state of Alabama has executed approximately 2.4 people per year. So if you're looking at from 2018 to 2008, you add that up and average up how many we execute a year, it runs about 2.4. That's pretty close. Is he really suggesting that if we didn't abort children in the state of Alabama, that we would be executing 6,000 people? Because that's about how many people are aborted in the state of Alabama. That's how many children we lose a year just in our state. That's right. Ruby Red, Alabama, part of the Bible Belt, still about 6,000 abortions a year. Is he really suggesting that every single one of those children would grow up and wind up in the electric chair when we currently have a rate of about 2.4? I mean, the abortion rate is 2,500 times larger than our execution rate. Is, does he really think the people of Alabama are so stupid to believe that we would be executing people in mass, that these people that are aborted would commit crimes that are so heinous that they would merit the death penalty? In every single one of these cases, you've got to be kidding me. There's absolutely no way. And another thing to consider, too, even if that were true, that's still ruthlessly killing people that you think might become criminals eventually at some point before they're born. And just to kind of give you an idea of, of why this argument is complete garbage, we'll go ahead and look at this graphic. So this is a chart that shows abortions and the abortion rate in the country. And it starts at 1965. You'll see a big spike right around the time Roe v. Wade. And then it peaks about 1980 and, and goes down slightly and, and has been really since about 1981, 82, I think, is, is where that happened. And the line that I really want you to pay attention to here is the abortion rate. 
because that, of course, adjusts for population. So if you're looking at that red line and you see the abortion rate, that's the best indicator of exactly where our abortion, uh, the, the amount of abortion per population, and you can see that that's been going down since the 1980s. Now, what I want you to do is contrast that with this next chart. This is the violent crime rate from 1960 to 2016. You see, you would think, based on this particular argument, that if we were to not abort children, that we would have an explosion of crime because these children are unwanted and unloved, you would think that that would mean there would be a reverse correlation. In other words, the more abortions we have, the less violent crime we have. But there's absolutely no relationship between these two at all. If you're looking at violent crimes, they peak right about 1994, 1993, somewhere in that area. And then there's a steady decline. And remember that we had a peak of abortion rate in about the 1980s and then a steady decline. Well, if we're not aborting nearly as many people per capita, according to Representative John Rogers' logic, then the reverse should be true. If our abortion rate is going down, our violent crime rate should be going up because we're not, quote unquote, aborting the criminals. But if you're looking at these two graphs, the data simply does not bear out that argument. In fact, it shows the exact opposite. Now, I don't think that the violent crime rate is going down because we're having less abortions. I'm saying that there's no relationship between the two of them whatsoever. And this idea that aborting children is a good way to lower the crime rate and, and because if we don't abort them in the womb, then we're going to have to execute them in the electric chair. That is just a mountain of stupid on top of a whole planet of stupid. There is no way to even fathom how wrong that is, both from a moral perspective and from a facts and data perspective. There's just nothing that backs up that statement. For whatever reason, I guess Democrats would like it to be true because it sort of salves their conscience, uh, conscience when it comes to supporting a policy that kills children. But the facts and data just don't back you up on that. I'm sorry. There is absolutely no way that you can make that argument even come close to working. And when asked about it, he basically doubled down and said, oh, yeah, I meant what I said. They gave him a chance to walk it back. They asked him because this uh, was an interview that they did later with Yellowhammer News. They came back the next day and asked him about it. He's like, oh, yeah, I stand by behind what I said. Uh, I, I mean, this is a guy who fell out of the stupid tree and hit every single branch on the way down. There is no other word to describe it. I, I wish my ability as a communicator were better and I could come up with a better description, but I don't think there's a more appropriate analogy to give here. But it all boils down to this. It all boils down to worldview. Do you blame people for their own actions? Do you think people should be held responsible for their own actions. And I'm not talking about the actions of the mother and using the child as a punishment for being lewd or any of that. I, I'm not saying that there's no legitimacy to that argument because I think that you have to hold all people accountable for their actions, but that's not even what I'm talking about here. Do you believe that society determines what a person does or that the person themselves and the choices that they make determines what that person does, because the implication here by Representative John Rogers is that, well, they're being born into a less than ideal situation. Therefore, they're going to become murderers. They're going to become psychopaths that do crimes that are so heinous, they're going to wind up in the electric chair. That's what he's saying. That because these children have certain demographics that we need to go ahead and off them before they even get a chance to live or a chance to make their own choices and their own decisions. That's not America. And more importantly, it's completely unchristian. The whole crux of Christian teaching is that people do make their own choices. We make our own decisions. We can choose right or we can choose wrong and reap the rewards or benefits as the case may be. But we still make our own choices. And it seems as though Representative Rogers, along with a lot of the Democrats, have this unfortunate worldview 
where they say that society is responsible for all the world's ills. We saw this just recently with the violent crime, the, or not with the violent crime, with the uh, voting for incarcerated persons, with Bernie Sanders trumpeting this, which I don't really even understand what demographic he's trying to reach there, but basically suggesting that these people are just victims of their circumstances. They can't make their own decisions. They're incapable of choosing for themselves. And the only reason they became criminals or did bad things in the first place is because of societal woes. That's not the way that it is. I get that there are certain societal factors that make a person more likely or less likely to commit crimes or do bad things. That is true. I talk about those statistics a lot on the show. But the idea that just because somebody has the deck stacked against them or because they are more likely to become criminals, that we ought to judge them before they even get a chance to make a decision is incorrect on a number of moral levels. If you're going to make a decision on who a person is, it's hilarious to me that the left, who claims to be the party of tolerance and acceptance, is the ones that are saying, yeah, but they're probably going to be criminals, so we should just go ahead and kill them before they're even born. I'm sorry, that's not how this works. You don't get to decide whether someone lives or dies based on the demographics. You see, whether we're talking about race or income level or whether or not the person has both parents in the home, all of those things have a likelihood and an effect on a child's life, of course. But let's not pretend that that sets your course in life and then you can do nothing to alter it. A person's choices matter. And we ought to be following the words of Martin Luther King and judging people based on the content of their character. In other words, the decisions that they make, the choices and the person that they become. Rather than assuming just because of a person's bank account or their marital status or the marital status of their parents, or the color of their skin, that they're not worth saving. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content, and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, Four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.